My out-of-studio partner on today's program is Greg Durrell. Greg, thanks for joining me on According to God's Word. Well, Tom, thanks for having me again. We are going through Paul's epistle to the Romans, our encouragement to our listeners. We are going through God's Word, but we want you to be Bereans. We want you to either track along with us, go through the Scriptures with us, but more importantly, check out what we say in light of God's Word. You know, Isaiah said, "...to the law and the testimony, if they speak not according to this Word, there is no light in them." So it's your responsibility as a listener uh, to check us out, and it's our responsibility as those who are, in effect, teaching here to be true to the Scriptures. Again, we're in Paul's epistle to the Romans. We're in chapter 8, verse 19, and we're going to pick right up there. Verse 19, For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And verse 22, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Greg, I think this is speaking about sin and what sin has done, how sin has impacted all of creation, all creatures. Well, you know, there's no question. Romans 6 and 7, Paul clearly lays out that sin can really damage the life of the believer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost the believer their salvation, but certainly has dramatic impact in the Christian's life this side of eternity. But when he gets to this passage, especially beginning in verse 18, not to back up too far, but the very last part of that verse is the glory which shall be revealed in us. So this this glory, this glorification that he's talking about is something that's coming. It's in the future, and it should cause the believer to have expectations, because in verse 19, he tells us this groaning is temporary. This is something we're waiting. We're waiting for this expectation to come. And he tells us also in verse 20 that this groaning is simply, it's a consequence of sin. In other words, the whole creation is suffering because of the fall of Adam. But because of the second Adam and what he did, the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, we have great things to look forward to. We have already been redeemed. We're just waiting, as Paul points out, a little further down in verse 23, we're waiting for the redemption of our bodies. So the groanings that we experience now, they're experiential, they're a means to an end, they're temporary, but they should bring about the expectation and the hope that Christ is coming back. And that's the blessed hope of the church, to see the Lord one day and be caught up in the air to be with Him. Absolutely, Greg. We've been born again, born again of the Spirit, as you alluded to earlier. And in our conversation before we went on the air, Uh, You were talking about trying out uh, new contact lenses, a soft one, and which, why would you need that, Greg? If you, you know, you're a new creature in Christ, there's still problems on this earth. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even the the great healers and such wear glasses, wear toupees. If we could correct all the byproducts of, of sin, the fact that we're all dying, that everybody's terminal, well, certainly everybody would need glasses or anything else. And we tend to equate illness or sickness with very grievous things, but certainly all of our bodies begin to deteriorate from birth, and Mm -hmm. and it's just the consequence of sin. And that's Paul's good words here to us, telling us, listen, just wait, your redemption's coming, and that's the redemption of your body. We've already been redeemed spiritually in a positional sense, but but one day, and perhaps even soon, maybe even today, we'll, we'll experience the redemption of our bodies. Right. But this isn't for everyone, is it? No, obviously, if you're, not, if you're not saved, if you have not been redeemed spiritually by faith alone in Christ alone, then there will be no redemption of your body. There won't be a glorified body for you to rule and reign with Christ forever with. Right. Greg, the, the thing that, that hits me here, when we say this isn't for everybody, in a sense it is. God makes this available to all, and he makes it available as, as a free gift. So how how do you come into a position in which you can be excited and look forward to the redemption of your body? Well, it has to do with putting your faith and trust in Christ. That is, 
you're a sinner. You have to recognize that you're a sinner. You have to recognize that you cannot <laughs> pay the penalty for your sins, the penalty being an infinite penalty. Yes, you can't pay it off, but you can suffer the consequences, which is separation from God forever, or he is our substitution. Christ atoned for our sins. You can put your faith and trust in him, and by believing in him, you're born again. You're born of the Spirit. That's the qualification. And as I said, you can't. there's nothing that you can do for it because it's a gift of God, as the Scriptures teach. So when I say this isn't for everybody, I meant just because you're hearing these you know, these ideas and you say, oh, that's what I have to look forward to. No, there's a condition and the condition is receiving the wonderful, I mean, I say unbelievable, but it has to be by faith. It's just so awesome that God would pay the penalty for our sins. And that's how we come into this position of looking forward to being born again right now. If, you, if you're born again by faith, it's by grace through faith and faith alone if you've done that, then you do. This is exciting for you. But if not, you're separated from God forever. Surely we could say perhaps this is Paul's the best is yet to come part right. of the book. We have a marvelous truth in, in that we're saved for time and eternity. But he's telling us, hey, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Not only are you saved, but this this wretched body, this flesh, this 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 carnality you have to, uh, or as he would say, this dead carcass, in essence, that we have to carry around with us, is only temporary. And so all the groaning, all the, the things that, that we have to experience now are only temporary. Even even the, the trials and tribulations of nature are only temporary, and that when the Lord returns, those things will be restored to perfect unity and, and, and perfection, mm -hmm. as it was designed to be. So it's a marvelous thing. And in verse 24, you know, he says, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? You know, what's interesting, Tom, the word hope in Greek and as well as Hebrew is not a word of, of potential like it is in in English. When we say we hope for something, maybe it will and maybe it won't. But in into the Jew and Hebrew and into the Greek and Koine Greek, this this was a finished deal. It was a done deal. It, it was a guarantee. It was a surety. Mm -hmm. And and so Paul is when he's telling us that that we're hoping for this, means just as shortly as Jesus was risen from the dead, we're going to be changed, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, right. that our corruption is going to put on incorruption. The other thing to this, maybe we could see in all of this, is that this manifestation of the sons of God, as Paul points out, is something that's future. It's not present day. And you have so many people that want to bring that in today, saying, well, you should be healed and you should be wealthy, healthy and wise. And if we read this as we have, Paul is saying, no, this is something that's in the future. It's something that we're hoping for, and it'll occur when Christ comes back for us and not before. So it's not a sin to be sick, and it's nothing to be depressed about, because if you know the Lord, we know it's all temporary. And one day soon, perhaps all of that will change. Absolutely. Verse 25, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Greg, this is such a, a wonderful verse. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that we understand it fully, but I can get the idea right away that the Holy Spirit is there. Just as Christ is our advocate, we have the Holy Spirit interceding for us. How much more could you want? You have the third person of the Trinity, God in, in the Spirit, really interceding for us. Wow. It's a marvelous promise. But note he tells us that it's going to help, that he will help our infirmities. So we can expect infirmities in this life. Why? Well, because we're all dying, and our bodies are not glorified, and they're not perfect. And the other thing that we need to really see in verse 26, at the very end, he says, with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
So this has nothing to do with you and I uttering anything at all, as some people would have you to believe. Mm -hmm. It's simply testifying to us, as you said, that God the Holy Spirit is our intercessor. And even when we're so perplexed, we don't even know how to pray. When the infirmities are so great in this life and the tribulations are, are so huge, we don't know what to do. Then God the Holy Spirit, as part of his ministry, makes intercession for us. Perfect prayer to the Father according to his will. And that's a marvelous, marvelous thing that we have, every believer has. Well, again, knowing the Lord, knowing what he has for us, these are his promises. When the Scripture lays these things out, this is what God has for those who come to him. First of all, we we seek him. (laughs) There's nothing better than that. But there's not even a byproduct. But part of that, Jesus said, I'd come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Those are the things that please him, that are in him, that we partake of. And it's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. And he does it himself. That's right. Verse 27, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Greg, earlier you were talking about those who uh, misunderstand and even some who twist the Scriptures to say that we ought to have healing, that everybody should have should be healed if you're a believer in, in Christ, that by His stripes we are healed, and so on. That's just a misapplication of Scripture. And not that we need to look to the experiential, but all of those people who promote those and those who follow those ideas, check them out. They get sick. They get colds. Right. They die. They need glasses. You know, they're losing their hair. So, as we've been saying in, in support of the Scriptures, not that it needs our support, but just in reflection of what the Scriptures say here, that this will come. There will be a time. We're going to get new bodies. Well, you know, and too, he, he's telling us when, when we think things are just overwhelming, that when we think that we're at rock bottom, perhaps that's when the best prayers are ever offered because the Holy Spirit makes that intercession. He offers the prayer, as he says in verse 27, according to the will of God. So it's not praying amiss, but it's praying in the perfect will of the Lord. And so it's a marvelous, marvelous truth, a marvelous promise that we have. And he caps it off in verse 28 where he says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So we see no matter what it may be, it may be something that seems to be awful, but the Lord will use that for our betterment. Mm -hmm. And so what can that bring but joy in the life of the believer? You know, Greg, another point, just going back to verse 27 for a second, according to the will of God. Folks, you got to be Bereans. You have to check out what, uh, I don't care if it's a TV evangelist, uh, your pastor, whoever it might be, Christian radio, TV, it doesn't make any difference. But there are some who say, no, no, that's a lack of faith when you pray, God, let it be according to your will, or if it be your will. (laughs) That's crazy. You can't get it any better than God's will. In other words, when God lays it out, it's going to be perfect in every way. So to defer to his will is to say, look, I see through a glass darkly. I don't know really what's good for me, whether it's healing, whatever it might be. We need it done according to God's will, because that is perfection. You can't go wrong that way, right, Greg? That's right. Absolutely right. Please visit our website, thebereancall.org, to access our radio archives going back to 1999 and our newsletter going back to 1986. We offer daily updates by email or visit us on Facebook or Twitter. Are you looking for information about a specific topic? Go to the BereanCall.org and click on Topics at the top of the page. Our online store is TheBereanCall.com. We offer a wide variety of books, tracks, CDs, and DVDs. Note that most of our ebooks are free. I'm Gary Carmichael. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you can join us again next week. Until then, we encourage you to search the Scriptures 24-7. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back.